Water management, guys, it is crucial to the health of your home. You wanna take that water off of your roof, away from your foundation, and dump somewhere else. And the best way of doing that is a French drain system with a dual pipe. One that picks up everything off of your roof and away from the house, and the other one to keep your yard nice and dry. So today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to install this dual pipe system, how much gravel, what kind of fabric, and how to put in these overflow catch basins to catch any standing water. Welcome to the Comar Project. All right guys, so this is what my backyard looks like every time it rains. And it doesn't matter if it's a hard rain or a light rain, it pretty much floods the whole backyard. It essentially turns into the Nile River with standing water all over the place. Because of how our grading was done, there's nowhere for this water to go, and our sub pump turns on every 30 seconds. And all that does is just circulate the water back into the backyard, not fixing the problem. So let's let this yard dry out for a couple days and fix it once and for all. So as I mentioned, we're gonna be installing a two pipe system. And I have two different pipes here. They're both four inch corrugated, which means that they're gonna be flexible for us and we can go around corners. But one of them is perforated, which means that it's got slits in it to allow water to drain into it. And the other one is a solid. The solid we're gonna be using to collect all the water from our downspouts and from our sub pump and dump it out into a drainage ditch. We definitely wanna put all that stuff into the solid pipe because we don't want it leaching out from the perforated one. The perforated one is what we're gonna be using as the French drain system, but they're both gonna go in the same trench. I'm also gonna be installing these catch basins every 100 feet so that I can actually access them and clean them out in case there's a clog. In addition to being a clean out, this also will collect all of our standing water, which is important to the drainage of the yard. So let's get started and start digging. Obviously, you can do this by hand with a shovel if you have a short area that you're running. But since I have 700 feet of trench to dig, it only made sense to rent a mini excavator with a 12 inch bucket. This is gonna make life so much easier and keep the trench nice and even all the way down. I first remove about three inches of sod and then I dig down between 14 to 18 inches depending on the area. I start shallow or in the back where my yard is fairly flat and dig down further out to pick up the 1% slope all the way where we're gonna be discharging the water. And for us, it's a dry creek bed in front of the house. Now, even though I had the excavator, there was still some hand digging, especially under the fence and around the utility lines. You definitely wanna make sure that you mark those well and slowly dig them out by hand. The last thing you want is to disconnect your internet. That would be a disaster. All right guys, so our trench is all dug and obviously the next step is going to be to lay the corrugated pipes in them. But before I do that, I wanna actually verify that my slope is correct. I wanna make sure I have that 1% slope that is critical for water to go through. On the size of the house, I'm fairly lucky because I have a significant pitch that goes to the dry creek bed. But in the back of the house, as you saw, there's a lot of pooling water. So I wanna make sure that that slope is correct because once you get into the ditch, it's very hard to see which way that trench is going. It's very deceiving to the eye. So I'm gonna be using a rotary level to make sure I have that right slope. A 1% slope means that you are lower by one inch every 10 feet. So first I figured out my distance I'm working with with a measuring wheel, and then I used the pole laser that came with the unit to accurately verify my depth. These are fairly expensive, but you can rent them for about 50 bucks at any hardware store. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go run out and rent one of these or buy one of these. You can still achieve the same thing with a hand level as long as you're getting a continuous slope. Next, I use my hand tamper to flatten the bottom of that trench and pack that soil in so that both of those pipes can lay evenly side by side. And once I had the main trench all done, then I can dig out the extending trenches to my downspouts and my sump pump. Okay, so now that we have all of our trenches dug all the way around the house leading to our drainage ditch, it's time to put in our fabric. And I'm using a non-woven geotextile fabric that is designed to allow water to drain into the system and won't let any soil or weed debris get inside clogging the pipes. 
there's a ton of fabrics that are out there on the market and some of them are for separation and some of them are for drainage. You just wanna make sure you get the one for drainage. Cause if not, water's not gonna be able to get past it into the gravel and through your pipe. Once that was in place, we can uncoil the solid pipe first and start placing it in the trench. You wanna place the solid pipe closest to your house because that's the one that we're gonna hook up to the downspouts and the sub pump into. And we're gonna place the perforated one on the outside later once all the connections are made. Now, I've never seen any of these pipes come longer than 100 foot, so they make these pipe connectors with clips on them that will snap right into your pipes, connecting them for longer runs. And even though they have these clips on them and I know they won't come apart over the years, I always like to connect them with some waterproof tape or duct tape. This just holds them in place during the construction process. Once it's all backfilled, it's never going to move. And here I'm putting in the six inch catch basin drain that is going to pick up the staining water and serve as a clean out. Now, I know a lot of people that install front drains don't put them in. And I mean, theoretically, you really don't need that. But we're gonna be in this house for the rest of our lives and I wanted a little peace of mind. These catch basins are not that expensive and just makes me feel better about maintenance down the road. And as you guys are laying these pipes, especially with the solid one, Make sure you check to see if there's any holes in it because if there are, there might be some animal nests in there. Oh, there we go. Here you go. Some little critter probably had a home in there and uh, you don't want this in your drainage system because obviously that's just gonna clog it, right? Defeats the purpose. All right, to connect your downspouts, there's a couple of options that you have in order to make sure that water from the roof line is draining away from your foundation. The first one is you can take a piece of solid pipe and just run it to your drainage system. Make sure that it actually goes out into the solid pipe in your system because you don't want that water from your roof line percolating out into your yard. It would pretty much defeat the purpose, right? So this is a good option, but only if you have gutter guards on your gutters. Because if you just hook this up and you don't have any gutter guards like me, all that debris and leaves and everything else will just go right into this pipe and into your system clogging it. So for me, this isn't gonna work. The second option is you could just put a catch basin right underneath it and again, run a solid pipe to your system. The water is gonna collect in here and it does have a grate on here, which will catch most of the debris, but not everything. So for me, that's not an option either. What I like is this catch basin that's called a defender. It's got an angled grate on it that will allow those leaves and debris to kind of fall off for the most part, but whatever doesn't fall off, there is a filter in here that you can just pull out, dump it out, put it back in, put your top on, and you're good to go. So this is what I'm gonna go with for my system, and let's hook it up. I dug down so that that catch basin is low enough that the grate is sitting just above my yard level, but not too deep where I lose the pitch to the main pipe. Then with a hand tamper, I packed in that soil so that the catch basin doesn't sink down into the ground. And now I can place it right up against the foundation and pack some pea gravel in around it. Then using my utility knife, I cut off a section of solid pipe and connected it to the catch basin. And again, I put a couple strips of tape to prevent it from disconnecting during installation and packed in some pea gravel around it. Now I can connect the catch basin pipe to the main solid pipe using a four inch drainage Y connector. After cutting a section from the main using a utility knife, I snapped the connector into place. It has ridges on the inside of that Y, so when you slide the pipe in, you're actually gonna hear it click. And then I can tape all those connections just to keep it in place. And when you're done, it pretty much looks like this. Next, I'm going to be connecting my sub pump to the system as well, and I'm using an anti-freeze connector for this. It's code in our area, and what it does is it just prevents that discharge line from freezing during the winter. When a discharge line becomes clogged with dirt, ice, or debris from your sub pit, the pressure can build up in that pipe. Then when the sub pump is turned on, water is going to get dumped into that clog line, backing up your sub pump, creating a disaster in your basement. 
It's just one of those $10 things that I rather have and not need than need and not have. Perfect timing. With that done, I can put in the second pipe into the trench. This one is the perforated one that goes on the outside and is what's going to pick up all that groundwater from our yard. A lot of people think that it just takes water from the top of your yard, and yes, it does that and it does it well, but its main purpose is to suck the water from underground. So when you think about it, when it rains, your yard holds thousands and thousands of gallons of water underground, right? And with it being able to go somewhere, it slowly percolates into that pipe through those little slits, drying your yard much quicker. With all the pipes in place and connected, I wanted to secure the fabric to the sides before backfilling, and some baling wire is perfect for this. Just cut a piece off and bend it into a U-shape. Then you can stick it into the ground securing the sides. And this is actually going to serve a dual purpose for us, which you guys will see in just a little bit. But before I can backfill with gravel, I need to put in the extensions on my six inch catch basin drains. And this is just a six inch PVC pipe that works well for this. And you can see here that one end of that pipe is going to flare out, which allows that cap to fit in. Those caps have little ridges on them. But once you cut that pipe, that flare is no longer there and the cap won't fit. So I'll show you guys how to fix that a little bit later in the video. But for now, I'm just going to set that pipe into that catch basin drain and tape it so we can backfill with gravel. So I had to stop working because obviously it's raining outside. And I just wanted to show you guys these gutter guards and how well they're working. So I didn't do anything to this downspot. I'm not, I haven't even connected it yet properly down here. But you can see that all the leaves from my gutters are getting caught right there. And anything that falls through is going into that filtration system right there. So it's working. Just got to finish backfilling. The gravel that I'm using is three quarter inch washed limestone gravel. It's large enough for water to flow through it and it's fairly inexpensive. And with 700 feet of trench to fill, I needed a lot of gravel. So this is about 10 tons of gravel. And backfilling with a wheelbarrow, guys, it sucked. So I splurged and I rented a Bobcat for a week. Just like with the excavator, it's just a time saver. But more importantly, it really saved my back. So when backfilling, you want to fill the sides of the pipe and about four to six inches of gravel on top, depending on how deep your trench is. Obviously, the more gravel that you have, the more room the water has to get to your pipe and it's going to dry your yard that much quicker. But you want to also remember that you're going to be placing dirt back into that trench on top of that gravel. So leave four to six inches on top for that as well. And I even tried just dumping it straight out of the bucket into that trench. And every time I did that, it pulled that fabric from the sides and then I had to get out and kind of pull it and adjust it. So I just went back to shoveling it out of the bucket, which ended up working really well for me. Next, we want to wrap our fabric in like a burrito. And that wire that we stuck in the side of the dirt before is going to be very useful for this. I pull the fabric as tight as I can and pierce it with the wire on both ends and twist it together. This is going to keep it from coming apart when we backfill it with soil. Now, if you're not using wire for this, it's totally fine. You can use duct tape. Just make sure that you're using the really sticky stuff for it because the cheaper stuff just won't stick to the fabric as well. And then that fabric can open up when you're dumping dirt into it. And then it just creates a big mess where you're trying to get dirt out of that gravel. So just make sure that that burrito is wrapped really tight and secure. So now I can backfill the soil, just shoveling it on top of the gravel. And I also place the sod back down and then I can level everything out with my bobcat. You also have to remember that you're removing at least eight by 12 inches of soil from the ground. And you either have to get rid of that or you place it somewhere because the pipes and the gravel are taking its place. So what I like to do is I like to spread it on top of that trench and just kind of flare it out into my yard. It's much easier and cheaper this way, and it takes the grass a little bit of time to bounce back, but it, with some seeding and water, it'll come back eventually. But my bigger worry is the yellow grass that's behind our house. All right, so the grass has been seeded and it's trying. It's been about three weeks now and it's starting to come up in certain areas. But there's a part of the lawn that 
I've been frustrated with for about a year, and that's this whole area here and around the pool. So when they dug this pool area, they pretty much pulled up all the clay from underneath and they dumped it here. So I did seed it last year and I've been fertilizing it and trying to get it to grow. And because of that clay area, it's just not growing right. And it makes a person pretty much go crazy because we want a good lawn, right? So I reached out to my friends at Peddington and they recommended Ironite. Basically, it's a grass supplement. It's nutrition for the grass. It's not going to stress my grass out during the summer heat and it's going to boost that fertilizer that I already have on here. So let's put it down, wait a couple weeks and see how it does. Oh, and it was ridiculously hot the day that I was applying this. That's why the Crocs and no gloves. I just forgot it was that hot. So just make sure that you guys are protected by having close toed shoes and gloves on when applying this product. All right, earlier in the video, I told you guys that these caps won't fit onto that six inch drain pipe. Well, this is where we're going to fix that. You can either sand them down with a belt sander or you can grind them off with a grinder and a grinding disc, which is way quicker and I think it's a little bit easier as well. And once I have all of those little nubs removed, I can cut that pipe as low as I can with a cutoff wheel, grind it flush with the ground and pop that drain in place. And that's it. All we have to do now is just wait for the rain to come so we can test everything. All right guys, so after about four weeks, we finally have some rain and we can test this system. And to be honest with you, I couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. All of the water from our roof is coming straight down into our gutters and into those catch basins, which is then being taken into that solid pipe and dumped into the dry creek bed in front. And any groundwater that is percolating through the ground is being sucked into that French drain and also dumped in front. So if you guys have any questions on any of the parts that I used or the processes, let me know in the comments section below. And huge thanks to Peddington for supplying the Ironite and supporting the channel. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I will see you guys next time.